invest much more money in education and research than what we are doing currently. And the ways to do it is depend partly on government, but you can generate your own resources. Because when industry finds that you are useful, they will automatically come to you. You don't have to go to them because they want partners. They want partners for innovation. And I will tell you, as far as chemical world is concerned, I, I will assure you that right now, three important companies are in India. Dow Chemicals, they are setting up their own research center, needing 1,000 PhDs. We don't have 1,000 PhDs. Shell Global, in setting a center in Bangalore, needs 1,000 PhDs. They are requesting us to give those PhDs. In fact, it is so happened that the fresh graduates are picked up for 10 lakh rupees a year salary, fresh, fresh chemical engineering graduates, because they are not finding quality students. They find ample students, but they don't find well qualified students. Same is the case with G. Same is the case Mitsubishi is going to come. DuPont will be coming here. Sabik has set up a center. So in chemical world, we, I'm, with, I'm concerned with that. I can tell you that there is dearth of highly qualified students, PAD students. And unless we generate that, believe me, I just, this morning I came from Europe and I told your organization I might, might miss this uh, important meeting. And yet I was participating in SUSCAM conference that is sustainable chemistry. And the Europeans, I was the only non-European there and they were wanting to know how India is progressing in this area. And why are we different from Europe? And one of the things I told them, your population is going down, okay? Tomorrow's your industries will be manned by Indians and Chinese. We have, we have, we have 50 percent of population of this country which is below the age of 25. So 500 million people. You can see if they invade Europe, they will be occupying everything. I said jokingly. I said jokingly, but they agreed because there were parliamentarians there. There were parliamentarians in that meeting and they agreed with me. They said that is true, that they said we have to go to countries like India to get that talent because our industries will be run by people. Same is the case with Japanese. Even Japan is saying the same thing. They will have to go to India and China. So China and India will always remain in the forefront for the next few decades. And so there is a golden opportunity for all of you. Don't stop your education at bachelor's level. Go for higher education. You will be rewarded amply. Believe me, mark my word today. You will be rewarded amply because there are too many opportunities are wait, which are waiting for you and you need to grab them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor Yadav. So I'll take the clue uh, that uh, the alumni have to contribute. I suddenly remembered that Dr. Sonde is also an alumnus of IIT Bombay. So whenever he gives you a check, please tell me how much he has given you. Since he got a higher degree from IIT Bombay, I am entitled for a higher amount. I, I came to know a very interesting thing. It seems the kind of money that comes from Eliminus is mostly from the back benches, <laughs> not from the top benches, because oh. the top benches have gone into education, top benches have gone into academics, top benches have gone into teaching, and they cannot give any money. It is only Kamal Reikis who are on the back benches, they were cursing the system, not saying against these people. So probably one of the qualifications that you can become innovative is don't become front benches, become back benches. Learn outside the classroom. And that's where you can bring a lot of money. But the question is, question is, question is not only the money. I mean, I would like to beg completely different from Professor G.D. Jadav, because we as a product of this particular institution have done tremendous for this country. A lot of IITs fly away. We had occasion to go abroad. But when we did a lot of things for this country, I beat in atomic energy, or now I'm doing it in NTPC, and trying to propose that every year I want to recruit 50 of our students if they are willing to join, of course, I want to put that for the last part of my debate. If you are willing to join, not IT, I will give you good salary, then that would be a single most contribution that I can do it for this institution. Thank you. I would, I would just like to add two quick points. Uh, sorry for intervening, but I think it's an important point we should not forget. 
Uh, incidentally, uh, uh, unlike what Professor uh, Yadav mentioned, the biggest donors to IIT Bombay are not Americans, but Indians working in India who have generated their wealth in India, not outside. Uh, of course, every money is good money, and we gladly accept money from all donors, including non-alumni, for example. <laughs> But the point to remember here is I, I, I did set up the alumni relationship many years ago and I realized one thing. As an alumnus, I would have a tremendous soft corner for your institution. But do you know me? Do you remember me? Do you write even a single email or letter to me after I pass out? If you think I am a member of your family, do you care for your family members? I think that's a question that needs to be asked. I, I, have, I have asked this question 